Hello, dear sister, Saji. Hi, Anne-Marie. So uh, great to be with you. I'm really glad we're here together. We just had this little check-in before and I got a little teary and you asked me, is that a tear in your eye? And I was like, is it? And yeah, because I felt when we just did a short meditation, I felt into this joy in my heart about what we're going to talk about today and how important it is. And also how sensitive this topic is mm -hmm. and how much, uh, when I asked you a clarifying question, you know, how much heart I felt come from you of just, this is so, this is about expansion and about, you know, working with our mindset and, and really I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on this. So just so listeners know, um, you had suggested that we talk about um, how you are working as an astrologer and as a coach, you've been working with soul purpose and something has come up for you around how soul purpose got distorted by patriarchal views. And so, and then I also feel like you have a kind of an antidote to that, which is what and I wrote down what you wrote is what is sole purpose um, that is trying to be harmonized through divine masculine and feminine or yin and yang. So I'm really excited. I want to go on this arc, this journey with you. Mm -hmm. And I thought we could start with the distortion and maybe move towards what you're actually seeing as possible for all of us. Great. So why don't we begin there of, um, you know, you use the word patriarchy. So maybe we should just start with um, what, you know, this question you put of how a soul purpose got distorted by the patriarchal mm -hmm. views. Maybe just start riffing on what that means yeah. to you. Yeah. So there's kind of like a bunch of threads here and we'll just kind of see like which threads we follow, I guess. Um, I'll share about how this uh, kind of revelation happened for me um, just a couple of weeks ago because as an astrologer and a soul coach, I've been working with people around this theme of what's their soul purpose and how to live into their soul purpose. Mm -hmm. But I always felt a little bit of a, uh, like about that term soul purpose. I always felt a little bit of like a contraction away from the term, uh -huh. but I had never really bothered to really fully th think through like what was bothering me about it. And then when I was starting to write a, an article about how I understand what soul purpose is, this whole like kind of download happened for me. And um, so here's where like different pieces of the puzzle fall in um, is that the first thing that came to me about how I think a lot of people think about soul purpose, which I think is a myth, um, is that it's like one solitary thing. Like it's a one pointed, you know, thing that you're aiming at and you've got to figure out what that one thing is. And then you got to strive and, you know, yeah, no work pressure towards there. it. Right. And, um, and then the second one that pops up for me that I think is a common misunderstanding is that it needs to be related to your career. Like, well, if you're not doing your sole purpose in your career, then you're not doing your sole purpose. And I think that really like messes a lot of people with a lot of people's heads. They feel really yeah. badly. Like I'm doing this job in my career, but it's not really what I, you know. Yes. So anyway, those That's were the first two that popped in for me. And then this whole thing popped. And so here's what the whole thing was that popped <laughs> is that what popped in was I remembered reading, and you may have read the same thing that I've read. There's this list that circulates around, you know, for people who've been in the process of white awakening, you know, or wanting to wake up from racialized thinking and behaviors. Um, there's this list of what are considered to be white values. Have you seen yeah. that list? Yes. And the first time I saw that list, <laughs> I had a defensive <laughs> reaction, uh -huh. I have to say. And my first reaction was, well, these are patriarchal values. And as a woman, I feel just as oppressed, like every single thing on that list, I felt like was something that's been oppressive to me as a woman. Mm -hmm. And after I got over my defensiveness, I did realize that because I've been seeped in that white culture, which is steeped in patriarchal values, 
that yes, you know, I have absorbed those values also, even though I am in a female body. Yes. And, and then the next thing that I realized at that time, when I first read through that list was that as an astrologer, I look through a lens where I see things in terms of archetypes. Mm -hmm. And I realized that everything on that list, and in a moment, maybe you and I can talk a little bit about what are some of the things on the list, because not everyone's read the list or remembers what's on that list. Um, That all of those things on that list really fell into a category of a particular archetype in astrology. And that archetype is the archetype of Capricorn or Saturn which is very much about, you know, career orientation and going for goals and achievement and um, climbing the ladder, you know, going higher and higher and uh, can be about hierarchies and domination. Those are the shadow sides of that archetype. It's not all of what that archetype is about. So it made me realize that the white Western European industrialized culture has focused in on particular values that are like one side or the shadow side of a particular archetype. Mm -hmm. And it's not really tied to like being a man or a woman, or, you know, it doesn't matter what your genitalia are or your gender identification it's more about these archetypal um, values or archetypal um, expressions. Signatures. Mm-hmm. Signatures, and, but only focusing on one side, the shadow side of that. Fascinating. I wanna pause for one moment okay. and just underscore something you said, because I think when the, the word patriarchy is often spoken in the world, it, it is often perceived, and I, I had it this way for a while, that it's about men. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you and I share a very different vision, that the patriarchy is about a mindset that all genders can fall prey to because we are conditioned by it. Yes. And you're going to say more, and, and I love that you're bringing in this ast- uh, the astrological piece around it, that it's a shadow side. But I also love that you're bringing in, there's something about being white. There's like the white privilege side where there's some blindness. So mm-hmm. yeah, we can unpack that potentially too, but please continue. I just wanted to underscore the appreciation of expanding that term for any listeners who might immediately yeah. think we're talking about men. We are not talking about men. We are talking yes. about a form of consciousness. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So and, um, and I think it has a lot to do with power yes. also and a distorted understanding of what power is and how to use our power. Um, And again, it's very much a shadow, a shadow side. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so that list, um, and we can come back to maybe like kind of certain points of what's on that list. Mm -hmm. Um, As I was looking at these uh, misperceptions or myths around soul purpose, I realized that every single one of them match up with those things in that list of white cultural values, which I also think of as patriarchal cultural values. And, um, and so I saw that the way that we tend to think of soul purpose had been completely distorted by that lens of those values, which are about, you know, um, well, I think it's really, to, to, to take it into a really um, uh, like deeper into the roots of it, mm-hmm. I would say that it's separation consciousness. Yes. And a consciousness that, that's, that's set in a context of that there's not enough, that there's basically yes. lack mm-hmm. and each person is struggling and striving to get you know, the resources they need, the power that they think they need to get the resources they need. And mm-hmm. all of the distortions of, uh, patriarchal values, they all really are, are rooted in this sense that we are separate and that there's something to be afraid of and that there's not enough. Yes. Which drives the striving, which drives the striving and the competition and the power over Mm -hmm. because we wouldn't need to have power over anyone else. If everyone had 
everything they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. So it's like, we're, we're steeped in so much distortion. Everything's <laughs> been so distorted. Mm -hmm. And then that, 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 I don't know what to call it, what grows up out of a, out of a, a root that's rooted in something that's toxic and distorted, but everything that grows out of it is then distorted. So mm -hmm. this whole notion of what is your sole purpose got distorted by these same things of um, the, that there's not enough and that I've got to grab for all I can get. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that if I don't, then my survival is at stake. Yeah. It's a real threat. A real threat. Yeah. Yeah. So this, it's like, you're kind of building a metaphor of a tree. You're talking about getting to the roots yeah. and it feels like two of the branches that you've named are these, these white values. And then you've also named the patriarchal values. And I wonder if you want to speak to a couple of those just to give listeners an idea. I mean, I think you just did. Some of it is like consuming, striving, you know, competition. Yeah. Do you want to add a couple more layers on? Yeah. So, um, so there was a thing about the being like the single focus. Yeah. And this also leads into the yin and yang conversation, okay, great. because great. I think like having one, a one pointed focus is mm -hmm. a very young Absolutely. kind of uh, um, approach to things. Mm -hmm. And um, so now we're in that realm of yin and yang, which also has nothing to do with genitalia or gender identification. It's not about masculine or feminine. No. It's an essence. It's something that's just part of nature in this realm where there is duality. Mm -hmm. And part of that duality is that there's an essence or a quality that's very young, which is penetrating. So that single pointedness can be very penetrating. Um, and yet my understanding of our sole purpose is that it's actually multifaceted. It has many, many points to it. And it's much more like a constellation or a star than one single point. Yeah. And so that's more a more of a yin quality is to um, be able to be multifaceted and multi-leveled and multidimensional and understand how to embody that and how to express in that kind of a way. Yes. And I'm not saying that yin is better than yang, just like we're not saying that feminine is better than masculine. Right. It's just that in our culture, in the white patriarchal European type of mindset, there's been an over-focus on the yang qualities. So this sense like it has to be this one focus and there has to be like a drive towards it. It has to be like, driven which is also very young very and um and then there was that connection between like career orientation which has to do with if you can't monetize it it has no value oh my goodness yeah so presence has no value from that yeah. perspective yes and without presence we are totally separate from the nature of who we are which is just yeah. kind of a crazy yeah. Realization. Okay. So continue. Was there more you wanted yeah. to say on that piece? Um, so I think about, um, one of the things that comes up for me is I think about like women, especially in my mother's generation mm -hmm. and, you know, she was a housewife, a homemaker, whatever label you want to put on that and how devalued yes. that was because yeah. those women weren't bringing in the money. And does that mean that my mother didn't have a sole purpose or didn't fulfill her sole purpose? Mm. No, it's not, it's not just about the career. And again, that's that like elevating up of the value of like what has been the role of the masculine in our culture had been, it was the men who right. brought home the bacon. Breadwinners, exactly. The breadwinners, the bacon winners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bacon the, winners. The, the tempeh. The tempeh winners. <laughs> Those vegan men. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and then also the sense that you've got to create a product or you have to right. be a product. Oh, that's a good one. You have to be a product. You have to, to be, be a successful. Product. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel how much these these values have affected me yeah. in in my work, you know, and um, I feel like my work is so I am doing my sole purpose, as I understand it, um, through the work that I do. And I do earn money, you know, through um, supporting people with understanding and, and embodying and expressing their sole purpose in this multifaceted kind of way. Um, but I don't like the these pressures that I felt that I have put on myself, you know, to either create a product or be a product. Absolutely. And that if I'm not making a certain level of income, that means my work isn't valuable. That is such bullshit. And I bump into that too. And I bump into, I get so frustrated with all of the marketing material because there's so many ways that this is how you're supposed to do it and it's so young and so outward putting and I often wonder and I have not I rebelled against it when I created my first business revealing wisdom which is more organizational change culture because I wanted to know if it's possible to create a successful business by being a receptive listening Mm. attuning to the moment not to some big you know thing that I'm going to express in the world, but like moment by moment, what would reveal itself. And it grew in a very different way. It grew in a very feminine connected way, referrals. And, and yet I'm building this other business power reclamation now. And I see the impulse. Well, what's the right marketing way? What's the, how many? And it's like, no, I just want to know another way than that striving you're speaking about. So I appreciate that edge you're highlighting. And I noticed as you said that, as you shared that, I felt my whole like nervous system relax. Uh, yeah, say more. What started, what was the response So to? to hear you, even though you didn't go into a lot of details about how exactly how you did that mm-hmm. creation of your business in a more feminine or more ya, uh, yin, in a more yin kind of way, um, even without the details of it, just hearing that you were able to do that. Yeah was relaxing for my nervous system to mm-hmm. to relax into there is another way mm-hmm. because there has been such a sense that if you don't do this very young you know reach for the highest height you know and climb that one single pinnacle that if you mm-hmm. don't do it that way if you don't do this go 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 the do 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 mm-hmm. the yang 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 that you're going to be a failure which is again, a shadow side of the Capricorn um, archetype is like success or failure. That black and white. That black and white, yes. Yes. And so for you to present that there's not just a um, a possibility of of functioning in a more yin way, but that you could actually uh, create something very beautiful and powerful and uh, something that really worked. Yeah. That was effective. Yeah. yeah. Surprising to me that it did because no, no part of me thought that it could be possible to be <sighs> honest. And it was a stop start process and that's a whole other conversation. But I think that's what you're pointing to is how do we interrupt these beliefs? And so mm-hmm. coming back to the sole purpose, because I agree with you. I even remember graduating with my MBA and it was like, okay, you know, go get them. What are you going to do? And it was like, there were certain boxes and it was like, okay, I'm going to do IT consulting. That's the thing I'm going to go do. And, and I did for a while, but I felt like there was no multi-dimensional component of soul purpose that you're speaking to. So is there any more that you could layer on around the distinction between this myopic, if you don't do soul purpose and there's not this one thing you figure out before you die, you failed versus what I think you're presenting, which is larger. Could you say any more that you haven't yet said about the direction and how you see it? Yeah. So again, using the frame or the lens of yin and yang, Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to like totally be bashing yang because yang, that doing modality does get things done and we need it. Mm -hmm. And my approach and my values are about harmonizing the yin and the yang. And my understanding about each of our soul purposes, each person's soul purpose in this multifaceted way is that there are young facets 
of soul purpose, of a person's soul purpose and yin facets. Some people might lean more in toward one than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's not about, it's not, again, it's not black and white. It's not either or. Either you're a young kind of soul purpose or you have a very, or, a, or you have a totally yin kind of soul purpose. But what are the, the facets, the aspects of your soul purpose that some of them are young and some of them are yin? Yes. And, um, and that one doesn't have more value than the other. And also that throughout our lives, that that harmony or that balance of yin and yang, or the balance of which aspects or which um, yeah, which parts of our multifaceted soul purpose really are being activated at different times in our life. Mm. So there's one client I think about who, in her younger years, um, she was a scientist and she had a really you know brilliant mind and she did great work you know in the lab and. And I truly think that was part of her sole purpose was to do that very scientific work. And it was in a very um, male dominated um, uh, situation Mm -hmm. and in a male dominated time in our culture. And oh my gosh, she got into huge trouble um, that was related to um, uh, harassment and all this kind of stuff, which I'm not going to go into that, but, but her, I feel like her work as a scientist, um, was, was young and it was in a male dominated kind of a context and it was truly part of her sole purpose. Yes. And now she's in her, um, wisdom years (laughs) and she really struggles a lot with, um, chronic illnesses doesn't have a lot of physical energy mm-hmm. and is living in a um, like a retirement situation and she was really troubled by feeling like she's not out there in the world and she's not doing you know she's not doing something and she feels like she should be doing something yeah. <laughs> and doing something productive you know mm-hmm. and it was very very painful for her and for me, looking at her astrology, which is how I understand the way I see someone's multifaceted, multidimensional soul purpose, what I was seeing is that she has a very strong soul purpose to give and receive compassion, oh, which is very yin. Very, very. And needed. no, she's not going to make money. Mm-hmm being a compassionate person living in her retirement community. And it's not about the money. And it's not even about, she doesn't need to, you know, go around and be like the do-gooder in her retirement, you know, community. And it could be just, you know, sitting in her own apartment and doing metta practice, you know, doing a loving kindness practice. And also being loving and kind and compassionate toward herself. Yes. And allowing other people to express compassion towards her. And I, I don't want people to misunderstand what I'm saying and say that, oh, well, then she's just here to be completely yin. Mm-hmm. But I do think that it can shift that balance of yin and yang can shift in different phases of our lives. And at this phase of her life, it is very much about the yin for her. Mm -hmm. And for her to be able to accept that and to value, not just accept and be like, okay, I've got to be resigned to this, you know, being a compassionate person, but to see the value Mm -hmm. of that, especially in these times that we're in. I mean, this world, humanity needs so much compassion. Absolutely. It's such an important asset to bringing more peace into the fear body of our collective. Yes. And it sounds like she doesn't need to make money right now no, in her life. No. So she can really dive into this yes. aspect of her soul purpose, which is interesting what you were just saying, because I think it resonates what you're saying, you know, of like with the yin and the yang, sometimes things are more internal, sometimes things are more external. Mm-hmm. And I think about, and I'm still working this as I build the second business of, and I'm not saying this is actually the right way, it's I'm still learning, but I'm finding 
that I, my mind is very quick to go to the young, to mm -hmm. the structure and the figuring out like how I'm going to do things. And then I, it will create a lot of anxiety for me because it's faster than what's actually manifesting or it's faster. Mm -hmm. What is like the, what my business is ready for, or even mm -hmm. that I'm ready for. And so I think I've had to be in this journey of integrating the yin. So coming back into my meditation, listening, like, okay, so what is it? What is the next movement mm -hmm. to be touching the people that I want to touch and opening the doors that I want to open? And I have found that often what my mind thinks I should do, or the more kind of forcing something to happen energy mm -hmm. is actually the last thing that's needed. What needs to happen mm -hmm. is something inside of me first. And then mm -hmm. it just becomes clear. Like the, mm. the, the, the young becomes clear of how that action wants to manifest, but mm -hmm. I often have to do more internal listening to mm. get there. Cause I'm not following a prescriptive marketing plan. I'm doing it mm. in this very unconventional kind of kooky way where, I mean, kooky to my con, you know, conditioned <laughs> mind where it's like, I'm just listening. And can I trust that? Can I trust that I will be taken care of and that mm. life will show me the path? Mm. And that feels edgy. Mm -hmm. That's the harmonizing I think you're talking about, at least yes. my version of how I'm, you know, shuffling my way through. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a lot of different ways to think about how they balance or how they harmonize. That's yeah. like in a moment to moment way. I feel like you're really addressing that moment to moment way of, of balancing and harmonizing the yin and the yang aspects mm -hmm. of yourself and how you're um, moving through your life. Yeah. And, and then there's um, another way to think about it is different aspects of our life. So there's like career aspect and then there's home life mm -hmm. or relationship life or spiritual life. Absolutely. And so I might be very young at times, like maybe in my career or actually for me, like, you know, I'm sometimes a very athletic kind of a hiker. Yeah. Meaning I don't just like to mosey along on the trail. It's like, I'm, got a goal. I'm going to uh -huh. get to the top of that 14 er Yes. <laughs> and, you know, and I'm very like, I am going for it. And that's like, that's what my day is about is getting to the top of the 14 er Yes. And that's in my, my uh, recreational aspect of my life. That's not my career. I'm not like a professional <laughs> mountain climber. Um, but in my spiritual life, oftentimes I'm sitting and I'm quiet and I'm meditating, I'm praying, I'm uh, working with my energy in a very um, you know, inwardly focused way. So there can be that aspect of how we balance and harmonize the yin and yang in our lives is the different, mm -hmm. like, I don't want to call them boxes or components, but uh, because I think after a lot, I think about the, the different houses, I think about the houses oh, in the chart. Right. And each of the houses in the astrology chart is a different realm or aspect of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, and then another way to think about is that sort of that arc of our, of a person's lifetime like and how the balance yeah. shifts and changes in different phases of our lives. Yeah. Like the example of your client. Yes. Yeah. And I also think a lot about, um, there's another astrological thing that, that, that a lot of people have heard about, which is the Saturn return. Yes. And the first Saturn return happens when we're between ages 28 and 30. Mm -hmm. And when people are in that phase of their development, of their maturation, which is moving from kind of young adulthood into like middle, like the mid phase of adulthood, um, there are oftentimes all these questions about what do I, what am I doing with my life? You know, mm -hmm. What am I going to do for my career? Do I want to get married? Do I want to have kids? Um, what are my values? Do I want to make a lot of money? Do I want to try to be a billionaire by the time I'm 30? You know, mm -hmm. there's all these questions and these seem so pressing and so urgent. And something that I say so many times when I'm working with people who are at that phase of their lives is that, you know, it used to be like in my parents' generation and, and their parents before them that that realm of career was for the men for the most part. Mm -hmm. And they would, they would try to choose a career in their twenties and then they would stick with that one career through their whole right. life and hope to get the gold watch, you know, at the right. end of that, <laughs> you know, 25 years or whatever, 50, whatever that was that they would yeah. work to get the gold watch. <laughs> and it's not true anymore. Not at all. 
And so our careers shift and change throughout our lives. I've had, I can't tell you how many different phases of my career I've had. I mean, I started in environmental education oh. and then I was into, you know, animal behavior and doing field studies, you know, of seals and birds and stuff. And, you know, and then I worked in a health food store and then I become a, anyway, you know, so I've gone through I all these this. different phases. So mm -hmm. my career has been multifaceted. It's not this one like a monumental phallic, you know, right. <laughs> a phallic structure that you're that you're like climbing this this thing to the pinnacle. And 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 it's not just yeah, career isn't just one thing and sole purpose isn't just mm. one thing. That has to be the same throughout your life. Yeah. Now I'm having the experience you had a little bit ago of just this real relaxation in my body around mm. for anyone who's listening and cuz I have been I, I've had times where I've been really stuck, like thinking it's this one thing I need to figure out. And then when I, I've, I've tried so, I've done so many different things and I you would feel bad about it. I was like, why can't I figure this out? Mm. And I love what you're saying because it's not, there's not a one thing we're here to do. Yes. I mean, maybe at the heart, at the root of things, there is a one thing in one's heart. Like I think I am here to embody love the best that I can. But I didn't get that until the last couple of years. And what I, you know, I think the point that you're making is so helpful because I really hear the transmission from you is it's okay to change a lot yeah. and trust the journey as it's unfolding. There yeah. is not this one mountain you're climbing. Yeah. That's not the point, but that's yes. what many of us have been trained to believe. Yes. And doesn't that seem like it's a very young and very patriarchal? Yes. Kind of a focus. Yes. Which is a, a distortion. Yeah. It is. And I yeah. think underneath it, there's just sort of a fear. It's sort of a compartmentalizing fear. Mm. Of, I need to, I need to prove my worth in the world and I've got to figure out what it is. And then I got to hold on tight. Yes. And like get the promotions and do the thing. And, and yeah, I think of how deadening that could be if one doesn't feel that they could stay, move with their authentic movements and they mm. have to stay in a marriage or a job or whatever it is, because yeah. it's the thing that's going to make sure that they stay successful or safe in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. When you said that about realizing that your purpose was to um, express love, mm -hmm. I, I feel that again, going down to the roots, that the real roots, the undistorted roots, the roots that are in healthy, rooted into something healthy, not something toxic, mm -hmm. is that we are all here to be givers and receivers of love. That that's the universal human purpose. And that is the same for all of us, mm -hmm. that we're all here to give and receive love, that we're all here to embody and express our sole purpose in a way that is life enhancing. Mm -hmm. And that also I feel like is true for everyone. Mm -hmm. And then what's unique about each person is what is your multifaceted way to be a giver and receiver of love? And yeah. what is your multifaceted way of enhancing life? Mm -hmm. So beautiful. So there's that, there's the universal sole purpose of, of all of humans. And then there's the individual, individualized soul purpose. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes, sometimes people who are really focused on a spiritual track or a spiritual path and perspective want to just look at like, well, we'll just all, we're all the same because we're all here to give and receive love, mm -hmm. but then they don't look at the unique part. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's not either, or it's both, you know, mm -hmm. we're here for this universal shared purpose and we each have a unique way that that light of source or that light of the divine wants to shine through each of us. Yeah. You know, my soul purpose is not exactly the same as your soul purpose. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Even though we're both here to be givers and receivers of love. Right. Yeah. What do you think is most challenging? You could speak from your own personal experience or clients or humanity to actually be givers and receivers of love. Oh, I think it is because of the distortion that yeah. we've been living in. Yeah. Because we've been living in this mindset of separation, fear, and lack. Mm -hmm. 
And then everything, like I said, grows up. This distorted tree grows out of that toxic soil. Yeah. And I remember this one day, I can't remember exactly where I was in my life or when it, this like revelation dawned on me, but one day it just hit me that the kinds of going back to sort of the career mindset that, that the kinds of careers that tended to make a lot of money were things that were not life enhancing that were the things that were like, you know, the, the companies that are out there raping the earth, yes. you know, the extractive industries and the military industrial complex and mm-hmm. anything that had to do with, you know, power over other people and power over nature and power over our um, shared resources. Mm-hmm that's what would make money and that's what was valued in our culture and that the teachers the healers the mothers uh and not just yin kinds of um ways of being in the world but any kind of ways in the world that were about enhancing life and and the giving and receiving of love have been totally undervalued right and, and in an, a culture and in an economy where you have to have money to survive, mm-hmm. it, it's just the whole thing has been so distorted. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember learning this prayer from, I don't know, do you know who Pat McCabe is? No. Oh, she's a wonderful, um, she actually lives here in Taos. Mm. And um, she is... Um, uh, Hopi oh. and also um, some kind of Western European heritage oh. um, and she is an amazing beautiful spiritual medicine woman I would say mm-hmm. and um, she gave this example of a way of praying which was you know like that you pray for the things that you're wanting to pray for, whether they're for yourself or other people or the world or whatever. And that the way she concludes her prayer every day is please show me how I may best serve thriving life and love today and always. And I, I love, I love kind of wrapping up, wrapping my prayers in that. That is so beautiful. And so again, it's like a, it's a mindset shift. It's a, it's a paradigm shift from a death, a death-based paradigm, Mm. death-based, a power over paradigm that is Mm -hmm. death-based and lack-based to a thriving life paradigm. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that anyone's sole purpose is that they are here to kill people or to um, poison the soil. Yeah. I, I just don't believe that. I think that that could be an expression of the shadow side of aspects of their soul purpose. But those shadow side expressions can always be transformed into the life-giving, the Mm life-enhancing, the loving. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. First of all, that prayer is exquisite (laughs) because just how it feels in my body, it's like that kind of surrender into Mm -hmm. the field of love. And yet, as you've said, in different ways today, we live in a culture with systems of power over that are so driven by greed and so driven by scarcity and fear and, and power over, which I just said, but basically domination to get needs met, that I often can go into despair because I feel, how, how are we gonna flip that? Like how does consciousness shift enough for systems or those at the helm of the systems and reinforcing them to realize the devastation and destruction and the separation that's being reinforced by that amount of greed. I, th- I think of 
you know, what's happening in the palm oil industry and what's happening to orangutans and so many lives because of unsustainable palm oil. And it's in most of the food, you know, Oreos, mm. Bisco, all of these foods that are just everybody eats and we don't know. But I think of how, how can that become my boyfriend always laughs at me because I'm always educating. I'm like, well, did you know that, you know, <laughs> that comes from blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, I'm like, you have to watch this movie, Dark Waters, which is all about um, Dow Chemical Company. And I can't remember, it was 20, 30 years ago when they were doing the nonstick Teflon and that was coming into form mm -hmm. and it was creating a toxic, it's like a, it's called the forever chemical that does not break down in the earth. Mm -hmm. and, it, and their plant was starting to cause all sorts of cancer and um, the waters were being uh, polluted, the animals were dying, the people were getting cancer mm -hmm. and the company really just didn't want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. And this documentary talks all about that. And that's just one of thousands. And so I know we don't have a crystal ball, but I just wonder in terms of the soul purpose mm -hmm. and the harmonizing that you're talking about, any thoughts about um, how your coaching and helping people discover their multidimensional soul purpose, how that may or may not be impacting this larger complex mm -hmm. issue we're talking about. Mm -hmm. ah, um, I think that we maybe have to shift into a quantum conversation. I love you. <laughs> oh my God, talk about multidimensional. Hell yes. Because I think that on the level, on the three-dimensional level of like space and time and incremental changes and little pockets of things here and there and all the all the pieces of this like machinery of the um the toxic death inducing culture yeah to be really honest personally i don't think that we can make enough of those little piecemeal changes mm -hmm. to turn the whole thing around I believe that the change is going to have to happen in another kind of way that is kind of more in a quantum realm than in the 3D mechanistic way. Mm -hmm. And I listen to various, you know, channels and spiritual teachers. Mm -hmm. I can't say that I really can grasp it enough to really speak about it. I feel like I'm just starting to kind of get a felt intuitive sense of, of what this shift is about, this paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. Of course, as an astrologer, I do think that we're moving into the age of Aquarius and that is oh. what the paradigm shift is. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a quantum shift. Mm -hmm. um, I read a beautiful transmission just the other evening. Um, it's funny, the woman who puts these out, she's so not ego oriented. I don't even know. I never remember what her name is because she does not put herself out front and center at all. And so I, I never, oh, it's Ellen something, Ellen Kaufman. Um, and she puts out something called the Cosmic Times. And it is channeled from uh, a council of ascended masters. I'm glad I asked you how woo woo we could go <laughs> before, we, yeah, full before permission. we went on air. I love it. <laughs> and um and what she's saying or what the council is saying, and actually I've heard this through, through a lot of channels, channeled information, is that we actually have already moved into the shift. It's no longer like a question, are we going to be able to make this quantum leap in the collective consciousness that we really are? And that the part of it that moved me to tears, and I don't even know if I can put this into words because I haven't really expressed it out loud yet, is that she was talking about having compassion for all of it, like for every single aspect of 3D that we're talking about right now, all of the distortions that have been based in fear and domination and have been more death inducing than life enhancing, mm -hmm. to have compassion for the whole, all of it. And again, like not in pieces like, oh, well, I'm going to have compassion for this person who's over here, who's the CEO of, you know, Dow Chemical, or I'm going to have compassion, but the whole damn fucking 
package. I yeah. know I can swear it on you, baby. Bring it. Yeah. You know, the whole, the whole catastrophe, the full catastrophe of it. Mm-hmm. And as I was reading it, I felt my heart expanding like bigger than I've ever felt my heart before. It wasn't just like I was reading this and it was a con- concept of being more compassionate. I really felt like this just huge, vast compassion opening up that was so big enough to hold all of that stuff that I can rant and rave against. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's not to say that um, I'm going to be eating out of my Teflon, out of a Teflon, you know, (laughs) pan, you know, tonight, or just throwing my trash on the street or throwing, you know, um, uh, herbicides on the grass. No, I'm still going to, as much as I can live in ways that are, that I believe are life enhancing and honoring of mother earth and honoring and caring for all of humanity Mm -hmm. and have compassion for the full catastrophe. Honey, thank you so much for bringing this piece in because I feel like this is where, at least for myself, this is the strongest place of my embodiment right now is how to actually hold that cosmology, that everything is unfolding just as it needs to. All of the violence, like you were talking about people that kill each other. It's like holding that larger frame that that there is a larger unfolding and trusting it all, you know, it's the non-dualistic, basically the non-dual approach of just everything is just what it is. And it's so easy to get hung up on certain things. And of course it is because there are certain things that are painful to see, animal abuse, sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. There are things that seem egregious. And so Mm -hmm. being in human form and having an emotional body and a limbic brain and everything that's responding to all that while also being in spirit and having this larger sense that all is just kind of this grand experiment here. And it's just Mm -hmm. learning how to weave between those. And I think it's unique for all of us, but it's the compassion piece that you're bringing in of how can we be compassionate towards ourselves when we're in a moment of railing against something that feels like such a big injustice because action needs to be taken. Mm-hmm. And then that's more of the yang, yang yes. energy. It's like mm-hmm. action needs. And then when are we yes. in that quiet or reflective place of, you know, I'm just going to bring love into the world right now because there's mm-hmm. really nothing else for me to do. So thank you for bringing that part in. Is there anything else you want to say on that? And then I'll ask you just one final question. Um, well, what you just shared made me think about discernment. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes we need to be discerning about um, can I do something about this? Do I want to do something? You know, do I want to take a young action, outward action? Um, and sometimes the answer is, is truly yes. Mm-hmm. And same thing in your sole purpose, you know, is my sole purpose to um, chain myself to a tree, a giant, red, you know, an ancient redwood tree, so they don't chop it down. That may be part of my sole purpose. Right. And then when, when, when and how and is it is it my um way to be more the 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 yin compassionate allowing embracing and not fighting against and it's not again it's not that there's either or right so it, it calls for a lot of discernment and I think that's one of the biggest challenges too, is how to discern when do I act, you know, when am I active, when am I receptive? Exactly. Yeah. I love what you were saying on your own personal note of, you know, you're not going to go throw trash outside and you're, you know, not going to spend money at companies that are killing mother earth. And so there are places where we take action, but that discernment piece of like, how are we living our lives and how are we expanding our, our understanding of where our values are aligned and where they're not like for example like who we buy our food from or things like Mm -hmm. that and but yet it's all such a unique journey there's no right or wrong way to do it Mm -hmm. that's the Mm -hmm. point you're making 
Yeah. 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 Okay. So as we wrap up here, we kind of open talking about this kind of distortion of beliefs Mm -hmm. and, and then you brought in this whole beautiful thing around the yin and the yang and how there is a journey of harmonizing that you see as the antidote to Mm -hmm. the distortion. You've spoken to that in a lot of different ways, but is there anything else you want to say about that harmonizing process that you haven't yet Mm -hmm. said? Well, the thing that popped in was that kind of relates to your question you asked me about what did I see like making it maybe challenging for people to mm-hmm. to do the giving and receiving of love. And I think it's a similar thing with um, how to both understand our multifaceted and multidimensional soul purpose and then how to embody that and express it and you know, live into it that because of all these distortions, you know, the paradigm that we've been living in and the, the values, the distorted values we've been living in, it can make it challenging to have a clear seeing of yeah. your multidimensional soul purpose and also the clearly living into it. And so I think that that's kind of, it has to go hand in hand that we have to be like continually um, undoing the conditioning. Yes. And um, both for ourselves personally, and I think also on this collective level, you know, it's like part of the collective work right now is to undo that paradigm and um, to support each other in not being driven by those distorted values. Yes. Because it's hard, like just as an individual by myself to like break out, you know? I know. We and need so knowing other. that you're breaking out too, yeah, it feels exactly. really good to me. It feels right. really supportive. I feel the same way. There is something about granting even the simple thing of rest to one another. Yes. It's like when you see someone who's just grinding it out because it's habitual, which I am very good at doing, grinding it out mm-hmm. and then saying, it's okay to go into nature today, mm-hmm. or it's okay to rest. It's actually really important to rest. Mm-hmm. And what that's the giving and receiving of love right there. Just yes. an invitation to slow the fuck down. Yes and actually feel again. Cause I think the grinding creates more separation often because it's just all of a sudden we're just trying to pursue this thing. And yet mm-hmm. are we even there along the way? Yes. And then that separation from our bodies right? and what do we need for our bodies and what do we need emotionally? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So two last things. I want to have you back because there's a whole piece that we didn't do that I want to talk about, which is actually going back through those lists from that um, and and like mapping that with this, with the patriarchy and what are these values? Because I think Mm. you just brought up an amazing point, which is if we're not aware of them, Mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to interrupt ourselves and we're not doing this alone. So let's create another show where we actually talk about this and talk about our own experiences of how we're trapped in those places Mm, and what we, you know, like our practices. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we'll do that. And then final is obviously you help people do this. So I'm going to have your website in the show notes and how they can reach you, but do you want to add anything more about your soul coaching? Sure. I did want to say that I have a special offer for your listeners and viewers. And um, so there's, there'll be a link to that offer. And okay. so it is a, um, an offer for a soul purpose revelation session where it's a co-creative process. I think another one of the myths about soul purpose is that someone else could tell you what your soul purpose is. And that's like, no. And so that's not my job. It's not my job to say, this is your soul purpose. You know, right. my job is to facilitate this co-creative process. And my understanding of a co-creative process, and this is what we do in the soul purpose revelation, is to connect with mother earth, Mm -hmm. to connect with the divine and higher power, Mm -hmm. to connect and call in all of your guides and supports and helpers and ancestors, healthy ancestors. And then the process of our own intuitive knowing. And I call on what I understand from what I call the celestial intelligence report, which is uh, your birth chart 
which, yeah. which gives me a lot of insight into this multifaceted soul purpose. And so all of that, those are all those ways of knowing and co-creating are all coming together in this process that we do together in the soul purpose revelation. Ooh. And so I'm actually super excited. It's a new offering and okay. I'm really excited. And it was through my process of, um, offering the offering, deciding how did I want to articulate my, my offering of the offering, <laughs> offer uh -huh. of the offering, is that I had this incredible revelation about the distortions around soul purpose. So, oh, so we will beautiful. do in a soul purpose revelation and hopefully undistorted way of looking at uh -huh. your soul purpose. It's incredible. I, I want one. Okay. So Great. I will make sure we have the link to that in the notes, but I also just, because I want to tie it back to the way this offering was created, sounds like it came through that yin energy of like your own internal work, your own realization, and then it came into form. And that's that yeah. harmonizing mm. you're talking about. Yes. So what a cool frequency to come in and play through something that's been developed through that mm. format. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for, yeah. for bringing that. And I'll make sure that people can find you in our Thanks. show notes. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. I love this conversation with you. <laughs> and I'm so glad we get to have a part two. I think we do. I mean, I think we should. Okay. Right. All right. Thank you so much, Sajit. Thank we'll talk you with you too. soon.